What's going on, Lego Maniacs? It's Ty, the Lego guy here, and welcome to another episode of the Blast from the Past catalog series. Today we're actually taking a look at the 2001 catalog. So we're going way back, definitely old school. This had a lot of interesting, quite different themes. Some of them were flops, some of them I think were really good, but this one should get interesting. But enough talk, let's get right into it. And to start us off, we'll center a little bit more on the front cover. As you can see, there's a number of different themes, a lot of favorites in here, like Mars Mission, or Life on Mars, I should say, Bionicle, Alpha Team, Soccer, Star Wars. They even had kind of a knockoff Jurassic Park going on at this time, along with these awful looking little racers. They were just awful. There's no other way to kind of say it, but there are some good themes in this one. So let's open her up. And you'll notice the table of contents. And I will say this has the most diverse Lego line I think ever of all the catalogs I've ever done. There's so many different things going on. We're gonna get into that, but you'll notice all the different themes. Just part of the reason this is just, it's just very sporadic with what they had going on in 2001. And then this was actually uh, announced in 2001, October, that they're gonna have Harry Potter sets. Here we have Life on Mars. Now I've reviewed this set, extremely unique, very unique colors, an awesome play feature. It's not the greatest display piece, just because it's very long and hard to uh, kind of show off, but it is a cool looking little set, or I shouldn't say little set, it's actually quite big. And it has these uh, air tubes and you can transport the aliens around the base. I think that Mar Life on Mars is actually quite, quite good. Some people don't like it, but I think it uh, i think it was a pretty decent theme. Here we have a number of the smaller sets, and they have a lot of mechs, old school spaceships. As you can see, the aliens are definitely more advanced than the humans. At least that's the impression I'm getting. This doesn't look much more futuristic than what we have nowadays, right? As of 2022. And then moving on, we have Jack. Stone. Now, I am not a fan of this. I do not like the big fig. It just looks awful to me. I know certain Lego collectors do really like this theme. If you guys know Sans, he's a big fan of Jack Stone. Not sure why, but they are unique looking. I'll give it that. It was kind of like junior sets, right? So if you can view it as that, that these were not made for adults or even kids that were like eight and up. This is more so for children like younger than eight, I'd say, then I can kind of get it, although I don't think I'd even like this at eight, but interesting theme regardless. And here we have Lego Studios. Now this was interesting because if you'll notice, it was kind of like a knockoff Jurassic Park. They're saying it's Jurassic Park without saying it's Jurassic Park. This does not look like the, or Malcolm, I should say, from Jurassic Park at all, but that's the character they used. They had this interesting film this is actually old editing software, so you could make your own little movies, which is interesting. Old school desktop. But actually, this was loosely associated with Jurassic Park, because notice it says Steven Spielberg. I think that's part of the reason why they were able to make a clear knockoff of Jurassic Park. It's kind of like Johnny Thunder and uh, Indiana Jones. Here they have some more sets. This is clearly a knockoff of Indiana Jones a little bit more. And what's interesting is I think that's supposed to be Steven Spielberg the 1356 set. I'd actually really like to get that, but that's probably quite expensive just because I don't think he's included in any other. Oh, okay, maybe not so bad. Notice there's another minifigure that looks like Steven Spielberg. And then this is more so authentic Jurassic Park sets. Now they have Johnny Thunder as probably Dr. Grant. I'm not sure I quite agree with that, but they're really mixing the adventurer theme and Jurassic Park here, which I think is quite unique even have a Spinosaurus made in the old school type dinosaur form that they like to make. I think the dino theme is in here as well, but I could be wrong. Now, now we have the racers. Now, I am not a fan of these. I don't know what Lego was thinking when they made them. Just terrible, just not a fan. If you guys like it, nothing against you, but these just weren't for me. Very wonky. Theme. That's what I mean. Like you have really good themes in this catalog and you have some really off ones. 
Here we have Alpha Team. Now this was the first year that they kind of were out. They actually had a number of waves, at least two, I believe they, two or three. And there's Ogle's base, pretty interesting. And then we have the agent vehicles. This always reminds me of Austin Powers. This is kind of like Dr. Evil, and this is Austin Powers and crew, whatever you want to say. They're all agents, right? Very creative. And then moving on, we have some interesting looking dinosaurs. I wish Lego would do this nowadays because you could get whatever dinosaur you want for a lot cheaper instead of having to buy an entire set to get them. I guess that might hurt Lego sales, but I think that was a good thing that they were doing back in the day. I never did own any of these sets, but wouldn't mind to actually start collecting them. I don't think they're too expensive on the aftermarket as well. And they even had some mini dinosaurs. They're supposed to be young Brachiosaurus, and I won't try and pronounce the other three. And here we have Lego Star Wars. So this was the original TIE Fighter along with the Imperial Shuttle. Very interesting looking sets. I like the fact that they have a black hand and a yellow hand for Palpatine. I'm not sure what they were quite going for there, why they gave you a choice, but they did. And then we have the original Millennium Falcon, ATST, Waddle's Junkyard, which is actually pretty good for its time. Just recently reviewed that. A lot of the very first attempts are actually in this catalog. This like this is the first TIE Fighter, first Imperial Shuttle, ATST, Millennium Falcon, even the Droid Escape set, Droid Carrier. And here's the very first UCS style sets. They had the plaques and everything. I think the TIE Interceptor aged quite well. That looks really good, but the X-Wing, kind of wonky, a lot of odd choices with the colors. I think the newer one from 2012 is far superior, but again, this was good for the time. And then we have trains. Trains have been around for years. I think they started doing them back in the late 80s and they were motorized back then. And then we have Lego Soccer. I have reviewed the stadium and I'd like to get more of these sets. They're actually not too expensive. I don't think that this was the best sports theme, but I think it was adequate. Hopefully Lego does more stuff like this in the future. Okay, so this is this is awesome. They have Arctic, Lego Arctic. These were great looking sets. These are my favorite Arctic theme by far. Just, I love the coloring. I love the bears, these big ice cubes that were holding these ancient animals. Like, I shouldn't say ancient, but you know, there's an orange scorpion. Just very creative and I love the coloring. The blue and orange really make the theme pop. And here we have the Lego Dino Adventurer theme, which was probably the worst to come out of the four adventure themes that we got, but it's still pretty good. Out of one out of 10, I'd say it's still an eight. I own every single one of these sets except for the T-Rex transport truck with the Triceratops and boat. This is probably one of the most underrated large scale adventure sets. I own this one, kind of like this compound station, I believe it's called, and it's really cool. Definitely recommend you guys pick that one up if you can, and it doesn't go for too much money in the aftermarket. This plane is also fantastic. And I mean, who doesn't like Johnny Thunder dealing with dinosaurs? It's mixing two great themes. Absolutely love it. Moving on, we have the original, the first Knight's Kingdom. And I didn't actually notice this before. It's six plus. So these builds were actually simpler than most castle builds, I'd say, but I still think they're quite good. That castle I've always wanted. I don't own any of these, hopefully one of these days. This theme got a lot of hate. I don't think it's deserved. I think it was pretty decent. Not as good as the 90s castle sets, but still pretty decent. And then we have some old school Lego games, Lego Racers 2, Bionicle, Island 2. Oh man, this is just great. I think that I actually have Lego Racers 1 or 2, but I have to install it on my computer. Always like the idea of making your own custom car and kind of racing it around. No, I have the original Lego Racers. This one has those stupid <laughs> guys we just took a look at. Lego Racers, the first one, doesn't have that, which is, I think, a positive. Lego Bionicle, they even had it on Game Boy Advance. And then we have Lego Bionicle. This was the first year, I believe, that they started making this theme, and it's pretty cool. I used to own all of these. I did sell them. I kind of regret it nowadays. 
I don't think that Bionicle is the most amazing thing ever made, like some of the fans, but I do like the theme. Like, I still own some Bionicles myself. Cool story. Like the fact that they all come from different parts of their planet. And uh, yeah, this was just the first year that they ever came out. Moving to the next page, we have some Lego Technic. Not a huge fan of these. Do quite like this off-road vehicle. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. It looks like a Jeep off-road, you know, a buggy, something like that, but very cool. Like the green too. And then on the back, we have, hey, Lego Maniacs. That's where I get it from. Didn't make it up myself. Always wanted to go to Legoland. I've never actually been. Hopefully one of these days I you know, get to go. And then on the back here, we have the Mania Magazine, along with some of the custom creations these kids had sent in. This was something they did back in the day. And then on the back, it just basically shows this off again. The Lego Mania Magazines actually had all these instructions inside. And you could kind of try to make whatever creation Lego came up with. This is the Sonic Blaster Buggy. So interesting idea, but that pretty well does this catalog. Let me know maybe what your favorite theme or set is from this 2001 wave, if you want to call it that. Very interesting different themes that we had. Again, some of them are great, some of them not so great, like these stupid racers, but I really liked Life on Mars, Bionicle, Alpha Team. Star Wars was actually even not bad for the time, although some of them are quite dated by today's standards. But that pretty well does the uh, video, guys, but if you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and click that bell so you're notified for any future Blast from the Past catalog episodes. We do one of them every month to every six weeks and I love doing them, especially when they have all these different nostalgic themes from the past. But that's all I got for you again. But thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.